There are two kinds of people in this world. The people who fail to do what they know they should, and those who keep doing things they know they shouldn't. Guess what? You're both. Hi, I'm your host, life and business coach, Marcy Barker, aka your loving kick in the pants. In this podcast, I'll teach you the six steps of my accountability code that will help you wake up with clarity and show up with aligned action steps that make follow through easy and peaceful. All right, let's jump in. Hello, my beautiful people. I am here at my retreat. I've been talking about for a long time and everybody's like, you're so weird for just doing this in the middle of the room. But say something, guys. Hello. You're so weird for doing it in front of the middle of the room. (laughs) Proof that there are people in the room. So I thought it'd be super fun to record a podcast episode where we take clips from different parts of the retreat. So this is going to be a total mashup. And you'll hear from people who have been on my podcast before, like I'm staring at Heather Wagner. That was a great episode. Best episode probably of- she said the best episode. I always listen to it when I need a laugh. <laughs> I honestly do. Kim is here in the back. Kim was on the podcast. That was your first podcast. No, the first podcast. And now we're on episode like 50 almost. <laughs> My podcast, oh my gosh, somebody at my retreat doesn't even know what my podcast is called. (laughs) That's okay, we're all here to learn. The podcast is called Your Loving Kick in the Pants. And this is Tiffany, she's new, and Tiffany helped me plan and execute an awesome welcome party. So I'm going to pass the phone to you and just act like you're talking to... 3,000 people, because that's how many people listen. (laughs) This is Tiffany. Okay, so... You plan parties. Yes, I do. What's plan your parties. favorite part about planning parties? And I'm making her super nervous. I'm about five <laughs> inches from her face, yeah. so we could talk into the microphone. And there's so many people here right now listening. To You're this. doing great. <laughs> no, practically, I think my favorite part about planning events is that I get to see the memories that are made, and like, I like to see people happy. So yeah, it makes me feel good after something it's like an event is like, yeah, you know all done and everyone's like happy about it and they're just relaxed and like me as an event planner I'm supposed to take off the relaxation and then people can actually enjoy it yeah you definitely took all the stress off of me good I am (laughs) glad that was my whole goal yeah and now it's over and now you can relax at the retreat so we are getting ready to do a sound bath and for people who don't know what a sound bath is I'm gonna have my other Tiffany tell you about it and then after she tells you about it you guys are going to hear from a couple other people about what we've done so far in the retreat so let's hear from tiffany can i touch your sound bowls tiffany that that's why she's doing the sound bath and i am not okay tiffany what is a sound bath so you're bathing your body in sound vibrations basically created by instruments in this case some drums and bowls and it helps shift like the brainwave state that your body is in like the electrical frequency that your body's running at which converts to like brain waves so it helps with relaxation some people feel like it helps with healing and what advice would you give to a first timer who is like, this is a little weird that I'm laying in a room listening to somebody tap on bowls. But what would you tell them? How would you help them know what to expect? Uh, Just be curious about it. Like, come at it without judgment, right? It is an unfamiliar experience for a lot of people, and sound healing in general is less familiar in our culture. Um, We use music more for just entertainment, but definitely, like, just be curious and be curious about what's happening for you. It doesn't really, you don't have to like it, or maybe you do like it, but notice, like, do I feel any different? Am I willing to, like, dip in and try something? And Yeah. It's just an experiment. I love that. Okay, so we're going to do a sound bath, and then we'll talk to people about what they thought. So stay tuned. This is only the first night of a four-day retreat. Okay, I have done sound baths before, but that was like hands down the best one ever. Andrea is 
my financial therapist, <laughs> aka my bookkeeper of kicking assets. And um, you, this is your second retreat with me. Why did you come back? I left the last retreat with such a good feeling of community and empowerment and just friendship. And it pushed me out of my comfort zone and into places I didn't know I needed to go. So I could not wait to come back. Got, you got your loving kick in the pants. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever experienced a sound bath before? Yes, this is not my first one, but I agree. It was by far my best one. Mm. That was more intense in a really good way. Mm. I We got a whole class ahead of time. Like, I had no idea she was going to tell us about all the benefits and all of that stuff. So, what did you set an intention by chance? I did not. I actually was processing something that I had set a boundary today mm. and I didn't realize how much it was affecting me until we got into the sound bath and that's all my mind could focus on. And then I just kept feeling like I was letting this person down and then all of a sudden I had this aha moment of, I didn't let them down, I just set a boundary. This was a boundary and that's fine. And once I had that realization, the rest of my sound bath was like this beautiful meditative space. Yeah. Love, love, love that. What are you excited to learn from this retreat to build upon what you've already experienced? I have some big goals. So I am just really looking forward to the reflection part and figuring out like exactly where I want to take these big goals and how I want to tackle them. Awesome. I'm excited for that too. Thank you. We're starting yoga. Gina, are you excited for yoga? Of course. Stay tuned. Okay, that yoga class was not like a regular yoga class. I'm here with Gina and we decided that we should start a new format of yoga called talkative yoga <laughs> <laughs> we would be like the pros at it right <laughs> and um i'm here with gina nunez she was on my podcast before and that yoga class was fun yeah it was like Usually. not regular playlist no when we got up we were like love hate relationship with yoga and tiffany who did our sound bath last night asked you what do you mean love and hate relationship so I don't like to make my mind just stop oh, <laughs> and just mm -hmm. be silent. I'm always going, going, going. So I'm more of a, like a body combat, let's keep yeah. doing things. And so yoga, though I know I need it and I need to slow down my mind and just be mindful, I have a really hard time doing it because I don't visualize very well. Yeah, I was thinking I love it right now because it's right in my own house, but I hate it enough I mean I would never go to a yoga class unless they had some other reason like to go talk to people <laughs> exactly <laughs> go meet people I mean yeah. I went to yoga class after like a body combat if I was like sore just to stretch a little bit but I was it was like a love hate because you had to be so silent you couldn't you like if you made a noise you got these dirty looks <laughs> yeah so at a retreat do you like having yoga do you like having things at retreats that you wouldn't normally do yeah I like to push myself outside my comfort zone, and I always do them all. Yeah, same. I like it too. All right, today we're going to dive into the accountability code. We're going to do the first three steps, which are? Pop quiz, Gina. Pop quiz. First one is reflection. Yes. And then you have humility. Yes. And then you have... it. No. Planning and then yes. implementing. Oh, yeah, those, the well, those are the first three yes. steps. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I won't go any further. <laughs> and wake up and show up. The waking up is those first three steps reflection, humility, and planning. Okay. Yep. So I'm excited for that today. Okay, we just got done with our reflection workshop. Reflection is the first step of the accountability code. And I have Jessica here. And Jessica came to the last retreat as well. And you were like kind of getting teary eyed last night. And I was like, she's got something going on that's just mm. going to be really good for you. You don't have to talk about that. <laughs> I kind of like sprung it on you because that was last night in the illumination ceremony. But with reflection, what was your biggest takeaway from the workshop that we did? Um, my biggest takeaway this time was to really think about like what I needed to work on. And it was that I needed to work on like myself and not like 
my business. Like I need to work on me first and that will help like my relationships and a lot of other problems I'm having and will also make it a lot easier to run my business. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. So what would you say is something you're looking forward to this time? Having been through the program and experiencing it last time, what are you going to do differently this time? Um, I think that actually doing it last time is part of the reason why I knew that I wanted to work on myself this time. Like, mm-hmm. that that's more the root of everything. Like, last time I set a business goal, and it was good. Um, and, and you did it. You yeah. did it fast. Yeah, exactly. Like, I did it. And it was good because it actually showed me that what I wanted to do wasn't as hard as I thought it was. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like I did realize after last time that a lot of my problems are still the same because the root of my problems isn't just like my business. It's yeah. my own personal life. So with your business saying it was not as hard as you thought it was going to be, do you think that will be the same with yourself when you're like, this actually wasn't as hard as I thought it would be to work on myself? I yeah. like want that for you and we're going to manifest it. It's it's definitely possible because they're yeah, like I um I have ADHD and sometimes I think part of that is that I make things a lot harder than they are and oh. then I'll actually do things I'm like regular people do this all the time. <laughs> and literally I'll be like, "Oh, this isn't that hard." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like the quote from like Elle Woods in Legally Blonde when Warner's like, "Oh, you got into Harvard Law." And she's like, "What? Like it's hard?" Yeah. I'll like think that to myself as I'm like, look at me doing the laundry or look at me doing this. <laughs> like, it's not that hard. Yeah. So yeah, I'm hoping that like, yeah, creating like a routine for myself and working on myself in that way that yeah, I'll be like, oh, this wasn't that bad. Why did I make this such a big thing? Yeah. So. Perfect. Well, I'm glad to dive in with you and thank you for coming back and being here again. Yeah. Thanks for having me on your podcast. I wanted to do that too when I made it too big also. <laughs> It's, it's not hard. We just we need to do a whole solo yeah. episode. That would be awesome. All right. Thank you. All right. We did the humility workshop. The humility workshop is one that I know like brings out emotions and tears and all of that. And not like I try to make everybody cry, but bringing up emotions has a way of making people feel something that they don't normally feel when we're all busy. So I have Hannah here. She is new to me. I don't know if you've heard about me. Her mom has done my programs years and years in the past, and she's here at my retreat. So thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for being here. Yeah. Okay, so with humility, what was one of your biggest takeaways from the workshop? Um, I think one of the biggest things that I thought of was just it's okay to, like, allow other people to help you and, like, accept that other people helped you get places um and then the other biggest thing was when we did talking about like rewriting your story and just you know it was good to reflect and be like these are the beliefs that I've had about myself and about my life and all these things and how I can change those and they're not just fixed and so Mm -hmm. there's always room for change I'm glad you're learning Hannah is 20 Mm-hmm. and here with her mom and I was just thinking how cool would it be to learn these things at such a young age like you're just starting your adult life and I'm so glad that you understand you can re like you can do whatever you want you learn- <laughs> and it's kind of funny because you're like I don't know what I want to do so yeah. um if you don't mind uh, share kind of what your goal is of what you're hoping to accomplish by you utilizing the accountability code So I just recently dropped out of college, and so I'm kind of trying to figure out exactly what I want to do with my whole life. And so one of my goals is to just be braver with trying new things because there's so many things to try that then I get a little bit overwhelmed and I don't know what to try, and so then I end up trying nothing. Mm. And I kind of lose that accountability to myself to try new things because there's just so many and so many possibilities so you know one of my goals is just to try new things and be okay with not liking them or not being good at them and just having that bravery to just make the decision to try yeah earlier we talked about how you are the kind of person that gives everything 110 Mm percent and 
I was like, just give 80%. Like, see yeah. what happens. <laughs> because people like you and I who give it our all, all the time, people are so surprised by what we can do. And I'm like, we could totally half A it. And they'd be like, you're so amazing. <laughs> yeah. So is there anything that's come to mind that you're like, I'm going to try that? Maybe not 110%, but I'll I'll give it a try. Is Has anything come to mind since you've been at the retreat and giving it some more thought? Yeah. So I think one of the first things that came to my mind to try and maybe not give 110% of my effort to was just to talk to the people that I work for right now and see if I could like go they have a bunch of like social media people and just see if I could kind of like follow one of them around for a day or something and just kind of see because that's always something that I've you know been pretty good at I have a photography business that is basically solely ran on social media and so you know just trying to see if that's something that I would be interested in doing in like other aspects and so you know just be a pretty easy risk-free way of trying something new that I don't have to give my full effort to yeah I love that did you come up with that in the group activity working with other people brainstorming or that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm like, what are all the other things you're going <laughs> to do? But I have a way of, you know, that's my nickname. Your loving kick in the pants is to, to make you do things. But uh-huh. yeah, I'm super excited for you to learn the rest of the code and then just see what it turns into. Yeah, so thanks for being here. I think it's really cool that you're here with your oh, mom. And, you. <laughs> yeah. and I, and have you heard about me before? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you're, yeah. Your mom has been doing a lot of my programs for years. And so you've got your faces plastered in different parts of our house. <laughs> good that's what I expect (laughs) so cool thank you Anna yes of course hey listeners the message of waking up and showing up is yours for the taking in fact it's free I've recorded my entire audiobook and I'd love for you to consume it between episodes head to marcybarker.com to get instant access to the accountability code wake up and show up all right let's jump back in This retreat has been so good. I was amazing and planned free time in to the schedule. And now I am going to eavesdrop on one of my groups that's like, we're done with workshopping, but now we want to keep masterminding. So I'm just going to listen to the back end. That they're not doing, you know. But um, what could be cool. Is there anybody on your board that is the woo-woo, is the tip of your board? Do you have anybody like that that could do it for you? That they could be that could be their job. Doesn't this sound so interesting? I bet you (laughs) wish you were here. (laughs) Okay. Okay. What? Oh, I'm saying what I learned. We just got done with a planning workshop. Planning is the third step in the accountability code, and we're putting together our eight week goal. And I'm sitting here in the theater of this nice house with this overachieving group of people who are like, we need to get this like down on lock so april hyatt what do you do and tell everybody what something awesome was that you learned from sitting here in this room masterminding okay so i am a branding and website designer oh you've been on my podcast before i've been on your podcast it was awesome and honestly one thing that i learned was just getting really clear on what my goal is and then writing specific steps and how exactly i was going to achieve it in the next eight weeks set a timeline I'm excited. All right. Then we have Andrea Dreesey. She's been on this little episode of the podcast. We need a full-on episode, though. So you have a big goal. What's the number one thing that this masterminding here helped you with today? Just so many amazing ideas that I never would have come up with on my own. And just now I have so many options and I'm narrowing it down to figure out like where I want to go. But I could have options for goals for the next year from the information I got in the last 20 minutes here tonight. Mm. Okay, then we have Tiffany. Tiffany is doing an adult prom. She helped me put together my whole welcome party for this retreat. And in the accountability code, I talk about how reflection, humility, and planning is necessary. But it's really hard for me as a coach to work with people who haven't done those things. They're just implementing all this random crap. And Tiffany is doing all the things right. So we're in like in hustle phase. So tell, we gave you a ton of feedback, a ton of information. <laughs> when you have masterminded, maybe for your first time, how are you feeling right now? 
I mean, I feel great because I just got all of this information and all of this feedback. And I don't get it very much anywhere else. So when I get the feedback talking with all of these gals, now I'm like, oh, I that was a great idea. And now I'm going to do that and that and that. And since I have only two weeks till the event, I'm going to be just go, go, go. And now I have all this advice and different ways to advertise. And hopefully we can make my goal. Yeah, I think you totally will. Mm -hmm. And you have all the support right here in this room. Mm -hmm. And if you're listening to this and you're like, I'm trying to do all the things too, I'm going to tell you what I told Tiffany. Give yourself a pat on the back. Like, take credit where credit is due because you won't fail if you have that can-do attitude. Mm -hmm. Now we have Heidi, and Heidi is like expert over here. She has a lot of big goals. And I'm sure you've done a lot of masterminding and a lot of coaching experiences what would you say this masterminding brought to you that maybe you haven't experienced before um I think I constantly have ideas I'm an idea person so I'm just you know constantly going with that but what this did was it really clarified for me what I didn't want to do and also like just the act of verbalizing it and talking through it I'm like oh that's the answer right it comes out as you speak because I verbal process so having a room full of people that will just listen and then I'm like okay I actually know what I'm going to do now even if I haven't said it in the conversation so it it just gives me an outlet to be able to get clear on what I need to do you guys should see her notes too like front and back no blank space at all Heidi in one or two sentences give yourself a shout out um, like, <laughs> like What's your business oh. advertise. Okay. Well, my organization is called 100 Humanitarians International, and we have helped 6,000 families in Kenya get on a path towards self-reliance with learning to grow their own food. And I'm super excited to do this gala because it just means that we can expand to even more families. And my goal is to reach 10,000 families in the next year which is a huge endeavor. So I have no doubt that you will do it. It's been really fun to see everything that you're doing. And now I have two of my master masterminders that are in my retreats and you have heard them on the podcast before. So first is Felicia. Felicia is like my golden child. And, and I'm like, if you are listening to the podcast, you might be offended. But if you don't listen to the podcast, then you will have never heard that. So anyway, Felicia, though, I love we do the kind of masterminding we did tonight is like every single phone call that me and Felicia do because she gets these fantastic ideas. Well, I give her the ideas and then she does them. But what would you say you loved about tonight? Um, Tonight was really good. I got a lot of clarity of what I want to do because I'm kind of deciding where what the next steps for my business are. And one of my next steps was an optional some idea that I haven't come up with yet. And I got a lot of ideas just talking to some different people. So sometimes maybe you're putting yourself in the wrong place or the same place over and over and you just need a new perspective. And this group definitely gave me the new perspective that I was looking for for my business. Mm, Love that. And then we have Gina. Gina is a constant. It's almost like if you see Marcy, you'll see Gina right behind. And I love that because we do a lot of good stuff together. Um, What would you say you got for masterminding tonight? Because you and I can do all the things all the time. What did you get tonight? Tonight was, um, what I loved is I love being in a room with incredible women that just want to help and that have so much knowledge and so much experience to share and give. And they're so willing to do it. They take their own personal experience, their own failures, their own successes, and they give ideas that work. And all they want is for everyone to succeed Mm -hmm. and reach their goals. And that's what I love about Mastermind. Yeah, I absolutely love that too. So don't you guys wish you were here? (laughs) If you haven't yet, I want to invite you to book a call with me. You can book it at marcybarker.com, but I want to see you succeed as well. And guess what? When you book a call with me, you're going to have access to all these people that I have in the room with me all the time, like super fantastic women who want to see you succeed. So it's time to go to bed soon after our sound bath, but we'll see you all for day three. All right, everybody, are you so excited for the declaration commitment section? Okay. 
I know you can't see that, but I told them to cheer. <laughs> Some of them are a little nervous, but I wanted to put this on the podcast because if you're listening to this, your loving kick in the pants, you have goals and you get to experience here what setting a goal and setting a commitment looks like. So speak loud, everybody. Be confident. Um, I'm Felicia Black, and I commit to achieving my eight-week goal to put in the work to make an an informed decision on what direction my business will go starting in January. I, Kim Carlson, commit to achieving my eight-week goal of doing 60 acts of self-care. I'm Bridget Carpenter. I commit to achieving my eight-week goal of running for half an hour without stopping. I, Gina Nunez, commit to achieving my eight-week goal of helping a minimum of three people earn a $1,000 Christmas loan. I'm Tanya McDonald. I commit to achieving my eight-week goal of planning my week so I can be more intentional with my time and having more mental peace and clarity. Okay, my name is Heidi Totten. I commit to achieving my eight-week goal of engaging my team by creating and planning the daily steps to fill the Giving Tuesday Gala. I'm Jessica Smith. I commit to achieving my eight-week goal of creating and tracking a daily and weekly routine to improve my mental health and better take care of myself and my family. I, Rebecca Miller, commit to achieving my eight-week goal of helping 20 women balance hormones with OVA and OVA M with food choices. And fun fact, right before our period, if you're craving chocolate, it's because your body has a lot of iron that is in your blood, so instead of eating chocolate, eat a steak. I, April Hyatt, commit to achieving my eight-week goal of finishing my complete website templates and how-to videos that go with them and have them ready for sale on my website before Halloween. All right. (laughs) I, Heather Wagner, commit to achieving my eight-week goal of taking one bag of crap to donation a week. I, Annie, commit to achieving my eight-week goal of keeping and maintaining a clean and organized home that flows in a peaceful and harmonious way. I am going to commit to achieving my eight-week goal of trying eight new things that push me out of my comfort zone to help me find something that resonates with my future. I, Tiffany Zwanitzer, commit to achieving my eight-week goal of hosting, reflecting, and determining if this adult prom is something I would host in the future. I am very committed to achieving my eight-week goal of creating and being ready to launch my personal budgeting course. I, L. Pace, commit to achieving my eight week goal of sharing my story of rising out of the dark and becoming a warrior at a domestic violence event in October. I, to me, commit to my eight week goal of observing regular office hours. I, Shanta Stately, commit to achieving my eight week goal of developing a clear picture of what my business relationship should look like and what steps we'll take to grow our own businesses together. I, Naomi Hay, commit to achieving my eight-week goal of relaunching my website that will include my services offered, my podcast episodes, and will have a space to integrate and sell online courses once they are created. I'm Jay Holmes, and committing to achieving my eight-week goal of creating and carrying out a time management system that allows me to give enough time to my people, my home, and my work. I, Christy Martin, commit to achieving my eight-week goal of moving my body for a minimum of 10 minutes a day and drinking water. I, Celeste Hatch, commit to achieving my eight-week goal to be in a place of more self-love by doing 15 to 30 minutes of self-care daily, looking myself in the mirror with positive affirmations daily, and writing my daily successes in my journal. I, Holly McKeith, commit to achieving my eight-week goal of kicking my mom out of the apartment and converting it to an air. I Debbie Hansen commit to be to achieving my eight week goal of being married. (laughs) That last one may or may not have been for dramatic effect only. (laughs) We shall see. So I guess. I commit to getting a step daddy. <laughs> Man, that retreat was so good. And since coming home a couple of days later, people have asked me how my retreat went. And my answer has been, they just keep getting better and better and better. And I would say my favorite part of my retreat is seeing all of the different 
connections and opportunities that are created for other people without me needing to be involved in every single interaction. And trust me, guys, that is something I would have never, ever predicted would happen. So doing my retreats has just been a really awesome way to bring the accountability code, wake up and show up to more people in a very real and tangible way. And when I started doing retreats, the first year I did my retreats, I did an eight-week program and then a celebration of all of the amazing things that happened. And then I got feedback from my clients and they wanted to get to know their teams better right off the bat. So this whole year I did retreats with a kickoff retreat and then an eight-week program. So after finishing up this retreat, it's given me a lot of thoughts about how I should adapt going forward. And so I'm just excited to to let you know that there will be more retreats and more programs and all that great stuff. But I hope that as you listen to this podcast, it got your wheels turning about how incredible having a community of supporters is. Having people in your corner who can light your candle and help keep you motivated and be there when times are hard and good is really, really important in your life and your goals. So if you need any help, at all with (laughs) receiving a loving kick in the pants. I want you to know I'm here. And with that, I will see you next week. Hey friends, I want to thank you for listening to this episode of your loving kick in the pants. If you got any value out of this episode, I would love for you to drop me a review or share with a friend what you learned. All right. I'll see you next Wednesday for your loving kick in the pants.